We are going to take a look at the statistical best ways to study for the CFA exams. There has always been some debate around what the most effective ways to study for the CFA exams are. Using the responses to the survey on the R CFA subreddit, we can look at exactly how thousands of different candidates studied for their exam and if their study methods resulted in a pass or not, how many hours they put in, what resources they used to study, and how many mock exams they took are all factors that can make a big difference in a candidate's chances of passing an exam. I've spoken in past videos about what I think the most effective ways to study for the CFA exams are. Mark Meldrum has also uploaded videos on what he thinks are the most effective ways, and specifically what candidates who fail one of the CFA exams should change in their study habits when they prepare for the next time around. To those, I've made some response videos about how I think some of his points are wrong and why there are other factors that could be more critical to a candidate's chance of passing the next exam. But the reality is that we all learn a little bit differently. So instead of relying on personal opinion, let's look at the data on what are the best ways to study for and pass the CFA exams. We will get into specific factors in a minute, but there are a couple points that need to be made about our data set here. The most recent survey conducted on the RCFA subreddit has brought the total of responses up to now 2,373. While this quantity of responses may be enough to yield statistically significant results, the data is just not perfect. The biggest bias is that 89% of survey respondents passed their CFA exam that they recently sat for whereas only like 44% of the broader population passes their CFA exam. But that bias may not be such a bad thing for our conversation here, because we are looking to learn mostly about candidates who passed the CFA exam and how they studied and what was successful for them. So in some ways, having passed bias results might actually be better. Also note that these were all level one exam candidates, and about 50% of them came from North America, which isn't exactly representative of the whole population either. All of that being said, if you haven't read through these survey results yet before, they are very interesting. So here's what they say about how to study and how to pass CFA exams. First, let's look at the total hours spent studying. The average number of hours spent by people who passed the exams was 296, and the average hours spent by people who failed that exam was 280. At first glance, this doesn't sound like that big of a difference, but when you look closely at the two charts, you'll notice that the chart of the total hours studied of exam passers is more tilted towards the right side of the graph, which means more hours spent studying. Also, there was a pretty significant amount of responses for the people who failed the CFA exam in the 150 to 200 hours spent studying category. The 50 hour blocks or windows that were asked about when people were answering how many hours they spent studying that had the highest percentage of exam passers were the 500 to 550 hour block and the 550 to 600 hours block. About 93% of candidates who spent between five and 600 hours studying passed their exam. And while there weren't all that many respondents in this category, meaning the data might not actually be statistically significant, I still think it shows that if you're someone who has flexibility in your schedule to put in five or 600 or more hours for an exam, whether that be because you're not working full-time in the moment and you can study like eight to 12 hours a day, or you just have the availability to start studying like nine or more months out from your exam, these numbers might show that doing those things can only help your chances of passing. Next, let's talk about the study materials that were utilized by candidates who sat for and took the level one exam. Most of the study resources shown on this list have somewhere around an 80% pass rate given by the candidates who utilize them, so maybe there's not all that much information we can learn from the set here. Still, there are a couple points in here that look pretty interesting. Number one, I was surprised to see just how dominant Kaplan is of the market share of paid test prep material over Wiley or Mark Meldrum or IFT or some of the others. They are certainly the most popular choice for third-party test prep materials for CFA candidates. Secondly, I was really surprised to see that the people who are using Mark Meldrum's paid service that also responded to the survey actually had lower average pass rates than some of the other test prep providers. At around a 75% pass rate, Mark's paid service was one of the lowest ranking types of test prep on this list. And I don't necessarily think it's because his stuff is low quality and doesn't prepare candidates all that well for the exam. My first thought is that these results have something to do with the fact that 
The survey respondents came from Reddit and a lot of people on Reddit use Mark Meldrum, but it's not like Mark Meldrum subscribers are overrepresented in this population. They're only like a third of the people who responded. So let me know what you all think in the comments down below about why Mark Meldrum's paid service kind of ranks pretty poorly here. Finally, I was partially surprised, but also a little bit proud to see Wiley performing really well on this list. Of the test prep providers listed, Wiley has the highest pass rate of its users that responded to these surveys relative to any other test prep provider. Unfortunately for Wiley, they compose a very small piece of the CFA test prep market. There were only a handful of people that responded to the survey who were actually utilizing Wiley, so the data for those respondents is definitely not statistically significant. Even still, I just wanted to point it out that the pass rates are really high for them. Geographically, we have one really cool fact that sort of refutes a very common argument that's being made right now about why the May 2021 CFA level one exam pass rate was only 25%. By the way, check out my video on that topic if you haven't seen it yet. Long story short, some people are saying the reason that the pass rates were so low, only 25%, for the May level one exam was because the exam wasn't given in India or China where the pass rates are historically a lot higher than those of people in Europe and the Americas and the Western hemisphere. Personally, I felt like that explanation actually made a lot of sense. I have people from China and India and other Asian countries who have far better study habits than some of my American or Caucasian friends. So it just sort of made sense in my mind, but the data here says that that might not be accurate. Of the people who responded to the survey, out of those from North America, about 80% of them passed. And of those from Asia, about 77% of them passed. So the pass rates are actually slightly lower for some of those nations. Finally, let's talk about the number of mock exams that were taken by each candidate during their preparation for their upcoming exam. This one is really straightforward and it totally makes sense. The data really shows that the more mock exams you take, the higher chances you will have of passing your upcoming exam. While the pass rate does increase with each additional mock exam taken during preparation, it's not a perfectly linear scale. I think if we had like tens or hundreds of thousands of survey respondents, we would see it turn into a very linear scale. One interesting note is that all of the candidates who took nine mock exams passed the exam. It was the only category with a 100% pass rate. Now, there were only 12 candidates here, so yeah, if you sampled a few more, you'd probably find some people who didn't pass. And there are also a couple candidates who said they did 10 or more mocks that didn't pass. So again, the data set isn't perfect that we're working with, but these numbers are all much higher than the people who took zero, one, two, three mock exams, and they slowly increase past the people who took four, five, six, or seven. I'm going to further argue for what I've spoken about in other study strategy videos, which is to continue to take more than three or four mock exams. It's really common for candidates to do the one or two offered by the CFA Institute and the one or two offered by Kaplan or Wiley or IFT or whoever else, and doing those three or four mock exams is certainly gonna help your chances, but it's not all that you can do. And if you're studying for six months for a certain exam, why not take an extra couple weeks or spend an extra 10 or 20 hours taking four or five more mock exams, especially since you can see relatively clearly in the data here that taking more than three or four is gonna be beneficial to your chances of passing. So just one more time, I know I've said it a hundred times in the past, but try to get in 10 or more mock exams during your final two months before any CFA exam. It's just gonna help you a lot. And finally, we saved the best for last, and it is a far better data set too because we actually pulled every single candidate who took any CFA exam levels one, two, or three for the past three years and pulled these hundreds of thousands of candidates on just two simple questions. Did you pass your CFA exam? And are you subscribed to Straight Talks on YouTube? What we found was really eye-opening. Of these 300,000 exam candidates, only about 11,000 of them were subscribed to Straight Talks on YouTube. Of these 11,000, 100% of them passed. Of the other 289,000, only about 10% of them passed. Don't check my math on that, just trust me, it's right, don't worry about it. So point is, if you subscribe to Straight Talks on YouTube, you won't even need to turn a page of the CFA curriculum. You don't need to do one practice question, you don't need to do a single mock exam, you don't have to memorize any formulas. You just subscribe to this YouTube channel and you're guaranteed to pass your upcoming exam. Don't forget to share this video and channel with all your friends so that they can pass too. Thanks for watching.